We've got a big task ahead of us today for this video up at the Cartier tank with five important things to get through. One, we'll cover the buffet of shapes, including the affordable ones, the expensive ones, and one that tripled in price in less than a year. Two, we'll talk about sizing and ask how small is too small? Plus, I've got a trick to squeeze more versatility out of the tank. Three, we'll navigate through the decisions you'll have to make when picking out the right tank for you. Four, we'll answer the question, what the hell is Moust Cartier? And should you consider buying one? And lastly, five, we're hitting the tank alternatives, including watches like this that are frankly better and cheaper than the tank. Stick around. I'm Thomas Hendricks of Chrono24, and I love the Cartier tank. It's considered the quintessential dress watch, although it does have some fierce competition we'll talk about later. The tank has famously been worn by Andy Warhol, Muhammad Ali, and Jackie Kennedy, to name a few. John F. Kennedy did not wear a tank. We'll identify that watch in a minute. But I'm getting off track. Let's talk about shapes. The affordable ones, the not so affordable ones, and one special version even appreciated by over 300% in one year. Now the tank you're most used to seeing is the classic rectangular Tank Normale or Tank Louis. The Tank Normale is the original model from 1917, the one inspired by a literal machine of war, the Renault FT-17 from World War I, and the Tank Louis is essentially the streamlined version that's had a bigger impact on pop culture. If you want to go a little outside the norm, consider the Tank Centre from 1921. These are iconic, but quite expensive. If you want one where you can actually kind of read the time, Square might be the shape for you. Hip to be square. We're talking about the tank chinoise, the tank au bout, or maybe even the monopoussoir. If you're a fan of Mike Nouveau, we sure are, then check out his new cousin, which is having a moment at auction. That's not to be confused with the other cousin de Cartier. Mike also has a killer cristalore with an Omani stamp on the dial. If you like round watches, there's the Benoit and the rare Benoir Alangue. And if you want to get really weird, we've got the Asymmetrique, which retails for at least 35,000, or the Censure, which you can find for under 5,000. And if you're after a grail, the Tank Aguiche Jump Hour is an absolute banger, but very difficult to find. Now time for the big reveal. The Cartier tank that tripled in price in less than a year is rectangular, it's steel, it's flexible. We're talking about the Cartier tank Basculant. In September of 2020, the average price on Cronin 24 was a mere $3,000. One year later, it was already at nine and a half thousand. And if you want a cheaper alternative, they are out there, and I'll leave it at that. Let's talk sizing. Then I'll share a trick for getting more versatility out of the watch. When it comes to sizing for the Cartier tank, how small is too small? The quote unquote large Tank Louis measures 25.5 millimeters wide by 37.7 millimeters tall. In an industry where a 39 millimeter watch mates waves, it's understandable to be concerned about sizing. But here are two points to keep in mind. First, it's a dress watch, so subtlety and elegance are the name of the game. I found it's much quicker to get used to a smaller watch than a larger watch. And at less than seven millimeters thick, not only will it slide easily underneath the cuff, it might also be the most comfortable watch you own. This watch on my wrist, which I won't reveal yet, is a 29 millimeter square, but because square watches take up more real estate than circular ones, I'd say it wears closer to a 35 or 36. The same principle is true for the tank. Secondly, we mentioned that Muhammad Ali comfortably wore a Cartier tank. Not only was he the greatest, he was also the heavyweight champion of the world, a big dude. For a more exact idea of how the tank might fit your wrist, simply Google Cartier tank on a seven inch wrist, a 17 centimeter wrist, et cetera, et cetera. Many a manly man have worn it before, and so can you. Now for a quick trick the tank is almost always worn on a dark leather strap. Very formal, quite regal, but quite limiting as well. What I'd suggest from experience is to get yourself a Perlon strap to up the versatility of the watch. They're maybe $15 each and come in all kinds of colors. Bit of a high-low combination that helps pair the watch with more casual outfits, but it definitely looks dressier than a NATO. And you won't have that stinky, sweaty, swampy leather in the warmer months. Just slide them in, slide them out as you're getting ready and micro-adjust throughout the day. Let's talk about some of the decisions you'll need to make when picking a tank. One of the first things to figure out is steel versus gold. Steel models lack the classic glamour of gold, but they're more durable, more affordable, and some people just look better in white metals. You'll also often get a bracelet with steel tanks if you prefer that. Plenty of tanks come in gold, but the key models in steel are the Tank Francaise, the Tank Solo, and the Solar Beat. Also, it's not quite the same, 
but you can always go with the Cartier Santos instead. Next, you'll need to decide between mechanical and quartz. In the watch world in general, people prefer mechanical movements to battery-powered quartz movements, but it's less important with two-hander watches like the Tank because you don't see that tick, tick, ticking of the seconds hand. You also have the Solar Bait Tank, which uses photovoltaic charging technology, similar to a G-Shock, but in the opposite of a G-Shock. The Solar Beat in particular has been well received by the enthusiast community. So the usual stigma around battery powered movements is largely avoided here. My advice, if you're adamant about having an all mechanical collection, go that route. But if you'd like to have some cash left over and or you don't wear dress watches that often, you can buy a quartz version and no one will even know. Speaking of affordability, you may be wondering what the hell is Mousse de Cartier? Why is it cheaper than a normal Cartier? And should I consider one? The answer used to be no, now it's yes, let me explain. The Mousse de Cartier line launched in 1977 as a way to bring Cartier elegance to the masses. The watches were in fact more affordable because they used quartz movements, not a bad thing, and gold-plated cases, not a good thing. You'll see the case spats on these watches marked with argent and plaque d'or, meaning gold-plated silver. Gold plating is fine if you rarely wear the watch, but it does fade over time, and it's been quite some time since the late 70s. Also, why buy a watch if you're not gonna wear it? That was then. Now, since 2021, you can get a gorgeous steel Mousse de Cartier in a rich green, blue, red, or black dial with a matching strap. These have been fan favorites since they launched, and Cartier did away with the Mousse de test on the dial, so the watches look more upmarket than the price tag may indicate. Side note, I'd love to see someone mix and match the individual elements for a tricolor effect with a green strap over here, a red strap over here, a blue dial in the middle, but that's just me. We're gonna finish by talking about the Cartier Tanks competition because the tank might be the signature dish when it comes to dress watches, but it ain't the only thing on the menu. We'll talk about that JFK watch. We'll talk about the one that I chose over a tank. What we we're not gonna talk about are significantly more expensive options, although I do love a Calatrava. The fiercest competitor to the Cartier tank, I like to imagine them as arch nemeses, is the JLC Reverso. Both bear a similar historical weight and both Maisons offer similar gravitas. The Cartier might be a tad more beautiful at face value, but the JLC offers more mechanical expertise, not to mention the hidden capabilities of that reversible case. It comes down to personal choice, and if you're really torn, you can always sell the tank to buy a Reverso, and later sell the Reverso to buy the tank, both watches are worth experiencing. For something off the beaten path, simply go to Chronic 24, type in your favorite brand, followed by the word tank. You'll find IWC tanks, JLC tanks, Zenith tanks, Seiko tanks, Gerard Perigot tanks, Longines has some great ones, and Rolex has their very own vintage Prince model, although they're increasingly hard to find and a bit pricey. You should also search for Omega tanks. After all, that's what JFK was wearing in that iconic seafaring photograph. Nice Omega, Mr. President. Of course, we should also mention that some of the tank's stiffest competition is other tanks. Listen to me, we've traced the call. It's coming from inside the house. Meaning if you don't like, or if you're bored by the classic rectangular case, you have a whole geometry class full of other options. Finally, I'll tell you about this one. If you're a fan of the channel, you've probably seen it before. It's a square dress watch from Art of Bar Piguet, most likely from the 1990s based on the logo. I purchased it on Chrono 24 for a little over $4,000 when I was searching for tank alternatives of my own. One day in the future, I'll suck it up and pay the 500 Swiss francs to have AP tell me the reference number. But for now, I like a little mystery. The best part is there are plenty of other watches like this from AP, from Vacheron, from brands like Boucheron, if you dig deep. Hell, the majority of Piaget's historical catalog could suffice as a tank alternative. Dress watches in particular are all about self-expression, so find one that speaks to you, whether it's a Cartier or something else entirely. I wanna know two things from you. What is the coolest shape of the Cartier tank and what is its stiffest competition? Leave a comment below and tell me what you think. I'm gonna look through to find the best one. I'm Thomas Hendricks of Chrono24. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.